Hi, today we're going to be learning about polynomials, which are a kind of algebraic expression. But first we're going to have a look at something called coefficients. Let's have a look at this expression over here, where I've got 3x plus 5y. Now in this expression, I've got numbers and I've got variables. Okay, now we learned about what variables are. So over here, I've got my variables. x and y are variables in this expression over here. But I've also got numbers, okay, now they're not just called numbers, they are called coefficients. Coefficients are the numerical factors in a term, okay, so over here I've got a term, it's made up of a number and a variable, it can have more than one variable as well, but it has a number and it has a variable and um, the numbers are called coefficients. Okay, so that's what we talk about, that's what we mean when we're talking about coefficients, is the number in our term. Now you can also have a constant over here, so plus 6, for instance, then this is also a coefficient as well, but this kind of coefficient is a special one because it doesn't have a visible variable attached, but remember we've learned about the rules of exponents. So I could actually have over here x to the power of 0, which is the same as 1, which means that it would not be visible. It's just going to be 6 times 1, which is just 6. So in this case, 6 is still a coefficient, even though it doesn't have a variable attached, but it's a special coefficient called a constant. It's called a constant because it doesn't have any variable attached, so the, the value of this term is always going to remain the same. Okay, so that is um, just a little bit of the terminology we're going to be using uh, while we're working with polynomials. Okay, but first of all, let's just have some practice working with coefficients and identifying coefficients. Okay, so in this table, we are being asked to find the coefficients of these examples over here. So the first one, we're being asked to find the coefficient in 2x. So in 2x, my variable is x, my coefficient is 2. For the next one, we're being asked to find the coefficient of x squared y in 3x squared y. So I've got x squared y, that's the variable part of that term, and then I've got 3, which is the coefficient. And then the next one, I need to find the coefficient of b in b. Now in this case, you can't see a number there. Okay, but remember we learned that if you have a 1 multiplied by a variable, then you don't write the 1. So if you don't see a variable or a number in front, if you don't see a coefficient, it means that it is 1, like that. Okay, so now I'm going to give you one minute to complete the rest of this table where you're going to find the coefficients in all of these examples. Okay, so let's see what you got for each of these. So for the next one that we haven't done yet, we have to find the coefficient of n in 8n. So the coefficient there is 8. Then we've got to find the coefficient of s in negative 3s. Now you have to be careful with this one. The coefficient is negative 3. It's not just 3, it is negative 3. So when you've got a negative term, then the coefficient is going to be negative. That negative is part of the term and is part of the coefficient. Okay, then I've got 
4, I need to find the coefficient of a squared b. In 4a squared b, my coefficient there is 4. Then in this one, I've got an expression where I have two terms. I have to find the coefficient of x in 4x minus 7y. So now you have to identify the correct term and find the coefficient for that term. So in this case, we are looking at the 4x. So the coefficient of x is 4. In the next one, we have to find the coefficient of f in 3f squared plus 2f. Now it has to be just f. It can't be f squared because f squared is not the same as f. So I have to find the coefficient of just f, which in this case is 2. Next one, I have to find the coefficient of m squared n cubed. Again, it has to be exactly m squared n cubed. It can't be any, it can't have any other different variables. Okay, so the m must be squared and the n must be cubed. So here, m is cubed, that's not right. m is to the power of 1, that's not right. Here I've got m squared and n cubed. Here I've got m squared and just n. So even though the m squared is right, the n is wrong. This one is the one I'm looking at. So I've got negative 5m squared n cubed. My coefficient is going to be the negative 5 in that term. And then the last one, the coefficient of a, b squared. a squared, b squared isn't right because the a has the wrong expo uh, exponent. I'm looking at this one over here. So my, expo my term is negative a, b squared. Okay, now just like in this one that we had over there, where there was no number in front, no visible coefficient, it was going to be a 1. Now in this case, it's negative, so it's going to be negative 1. Okay, so that's what you should have for all of the coefficients in that table. Right, now we're going to go on to polynomials. Okay, so polynomials, as I said in the beginning, are a kind of algebraic expression. It, the word, or the part of the word poly, means many. And nomial means term. Okay, so polynomial means many terms. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we use the word polynomial. That's what uh, the, the actual word means. Now, you get different kinds of polynomials. You get monomials. Now, mono means one. So this is, one, a, this is an algebraic expression made up of one term only. Okay, you get a binomial where bi means two, like in bicycle, which has two wheels. Okay, so this has two terms. And then you get a trinomial where tri, just like in triangle, means three. So it has three terms. So a monomial has one term. A binomial has two terms. And a trinomial has three terms. And these are all uh, polynomials that we're going to be dealing with quite a lot um, in the future. Okay, then in order for something to be a polynomial, let's just talk about what a polynomial can actually have. So a polynomial can have the following. It can have constants. Now we already talked about what constants are. Constants are numbers that don't have a variable attached to them. Okay, so their value is fixed. Okay, so it's a term without variables. You can have variables. Okay, so your x's and your y's and your a's and your b's and all of that. And then you can also have exponents. But now we have to be careful with the exponents in a polynomial. Uh, the exponents have to be integers that are not negative. In other words, you can't have negative exponents. You also can't have fraction exponents because integers are all whole numbers. Okay, So you can't have negative exponents or fraction exponents. Those kind of exponents do exist. You can get them. But if you have those exponents, it's not a polynomial. Okay, 
So that's what we are talking about with polynomials. The next thing we're going to talk about is degree. We can find something called the degree of a term. Okay, so the degree of the term is equal to the exponent of the variable in that term. Now, if your term has got more than one variable, so if you've got a term that is just 3x squared, okay, then the exponent of x is 2. So like over here, if I've got 3x squared, the exponent of the x is 2. So that is my degree. Okay, if I've got something like this, where I've got... 5x to the power of 7, then my degree of my term is going to be 7. Okay? But now what happens if you have more than one exponent in your term? So it can happen that you do have that, so or it can equal the sum of the exponents. Okay, now remember we learned about sum, meaning addition. So if we have more than one variable in a term, then it could be something like this, 3x squared y cubed z to the power of 4, for instance. Then our degree, we're going to take all of those and we're going to add them up. So the degree is 2 plus 3 plus 4, so that's 9. So the degree of that expression would be 9. Okay, now what happens if you have something like this? 5x to the power of 7y. Okay, now you can't see an exponent on the y. Then my degree is going to come from that, and it's still going to come from here, but you have to remember that there's an invisible little one that you can't see there. Okay, so your degree is going to be 7 plus 1, which is 8. Okay, so to find the degree of a term, we take the exponents of the variables in that term, and we add them up. If there's only one variable, we just need to take the exponent of that variable. But if, there are, if there's more than one variable, then we need to add their exponents. And that will give us the degree of the term. Then, we can also find the degree of a polynomial, or an expression. Okay, in order to find the degree of a polynomial or an expression, we need to look at the degree, the degrees of all of the terms in that expression, and we take the highest one. Okay, so our degree of the polynomial, or the degree of the expression, is equal to the highest degree of all the terms. So you take all the terms, you work out all of their degrees, you see which one is the highest, and that will be the same as the degree of your expression. So if you've got an example like this, uh, 2x cubed plus 5x minus 7x to the power of 6 plus 2 minus 8x to the power of 4. Okay, so in this expression over here, all of these terms just have one variable. So I don't have to worry about adding any exponents. So I'm just going to look at each of them and I'm going to see, okay, so this one, I've got a 3. Here I've got an invisible 1. Here I've got a 6. Here I've got 0. If you don't have an exponent, or if you don't have a variable, it could be x to the power of 0. So my degree of that one is 0. And here I've got 4. Okay. The highest of all of those degrees is the 6 over here.
Okay, so the degree of the expression is going to be 6 because it is the highest degree out of all the terms in that expression. If you've got more than one variable, then you have to add up all of them to be able to work it out. So if you had something like 2x cubed y squared minus 6x to the 4y to the 5 plus 7xy minus 3x. Okay, then we're going to take each of those terms and we're going to work out their degree. So over here I've got 3 and 2 makes 5. Here I've got 4 and 5 makes 9. Here I've got 1 and 1 makes 2. And here I've got 1 makes just 1. So the highest one is the 9. Okay. But most of the time, the kind that we would be working with is this kind over here, where you only have one type of variable or um, terms with one variable in each term. And you just have to look at what the exponent is and find the highest exponent, and that'll be the degree of your expression. Okay, so now we're going to do an example where we're actually going to be working with a polynomial, and we're going to be finding out different things about the terms in that polynomial. Okay, so first of all, it says consider the following expression and answer the questions that follow. We've got 5x cubed minus 6 plus 3x plus 2x squared minus x to the power of 4. First question is write down the coefficient of x squared. So I need to look at my expression and find the term that has x squared, which is this one over here, and the coefficient of that is 2. So that is going to be 2 over there. Then my next question is write down the degree of the third term. So the third term is 1, 2, 3, this one over here. The degree, remember, is going to be the same as my exponent of my variable. Now my variable over here is x, its exponent is 1. So my degree for that term is going to be 1. You can't see it, but it's there. Next, I've got to write down the constant term. So the constant term is the term that has no variable at all. So that is going to be this one over here. It's my minus 6. Remember, the term includes the negative. So I can't just write 6. It is negative 6. Then I've got to write down the coefficient of x to the power of 4. So now again, I need to find x to the power of 4. That is this one over here. And I need to write down the coefficient, which is the number that belongs to it. Now, it's negative. But I can't see a number over there, which means that it's going to be 1. So it's negative 1. Then I need to write down the degree of the expression. So to find the degree of the expression, I need to find, in this case, all of the terms only have one variable. So I'm just, I'm just looking for the highest exponent, and that is 4 over there. So my degree of my expression is going to be 4. Now the next thing we're going to do is we need to rewrite the expression in standard form, which means writing it in descending powers of x. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so over here, I've got, first of all, let me just write down the expression is 5x cubed minus 6 plus 3x plus 2x squared minus x to the power of 4. So that is the expression as they gave it to me. Now, for question f, we have to write it in descending powers of x, or in standard form. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to take each term, starting with a term that has the highest exponent, and I need to write them down in descending order. So, over here I've got x to the power of 4, that has the highest exponent, so that's the one I'm going to write down first, but I need to put in that negative with it, because it belongs to the x to the power of 4, so it's negative x to the power of 4, then my next exponent that in descending order is x cubed, so I have 5x cubed, I can't just write 5x cubed, I need to put a plus there, if there's no sign in front of the first term, it means it's positive, so I put a plus there, so it's negative x to the power of 4 plus 5x cubed. Then I have to find the next one, which is going to be squared. So plus 2x squared. Then the last one with, that has an x in it is the 3x. So it's plus 3x. And finally, I end off with my term that has no x in it, which is my constant. 
and that is minus 6. So that's what you should get for f, where you're writing it in standard form, which means writing it in descending powers of x. Okay, and then question g, you have to determine the value of the expression if x equals negative 2. Okay, so now we've been told the value of x. Now normally we, it, we don't need to know what x is worth in order to be able to do all of the stuff we've done so far. It doesn't matter what x is, what x is worth, okay? But now they're telling us the value of x is negative 2. And they want to know how much is this whole expression going to be worth if x is equal to negative 2. So now what I need to do is I need to substitute this value into that expression and work it out. Now I always recommend substituting in the expression that you have been given. Because if you happen to make a mistake when you were writing this in descending powers of x, and maybe you wrote something down wrong, and you put a plus instead of a minus, or a minus instead of a plus, or something like that, then if you substitute into your incorrect version of the expression, you're going to end up with the wrong answer. So I always recommend substituting into the, the expression that you were given in the, in the form that you were given it. Okay, so I'm going to start off by taking 5x cubed minus 6 plus 3x plus 2x squared minus x to the power of 4. And now I'm going to go and substitute in negative 2 for all the x's. And what I need to do when I do that is I need to make sure I put them in brackets. So I've got 5, then it's x cubed. So it's negative 2 cubed minus 6 plus 3, then 3x. So it's 3 times negative 2 in brackets plus 2. Then x squared is going to be negative 2 in brackets squared minus x to the power of 4 is negative 2 in brackets to the power of 4. And now we're going to go and use bed mass to simplify this. Okay. Also using what we learned when we were doing exponents, because now I need to know if I've got a negative that is being raised to an odd power, then that means it's going to stay negative. So I need to remember that. Okay, so I've got 5, and then negative 2 to the power of 3 is going to be negative, and 2 cubed is 8. Okay, minus 6, nothing's changing there for now, plus 3 times negative 2. At the moment, I'm just sorting out my exponents, so I'll come back to the multiplication. Although you could simplify that now, but we're going to come back to it, and I'm just doing all the exponent first. Okay, so plus 2, then negative 2 squared. Now, this is an even exponent, which means that this is going to become positive, and 2 squared is 4 minus, here I've got negative 2 to the power of 4. Again, it's an even exponent, so that's going to be positive, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so that's going to be positive 16. Now I'm going to get rid of all my brackets by multiplying. So 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Minus 6. 3 times negative 2 is minus 6 again. 2 times 4 is plus 8. And then negative, six, negative 16 is just minus 16. Okay, so now I need to go and simplify that. Okay, now you can do this in your head, but you don't need to. We have done all of the steps up to this point, so now we can just use the calculator to work out the final answer. And that gives us negative 60. Okay, so that's what we get for this expression if x is negative 2. Obviously, if x had a different value, if they told us to find the expression if x is 5, then we would get a different answer. So the value of the expression is all going to be dependent on what the x value is. And remember, x is vari a variable, so it can change values. So just because they told us it's negative 2 doesn't mean that it couldn't be something else. They could also have told us to find the, find the value of the expression if it was equal to 3 or 1 or something like that. Okay, so that is an example of a, a kind of question you can get when you're working with polynomials. So now you're going to do one for yourself. Okay, so here you've been given an expression again. You need to find uh, coefficients and degrees and constants and rewrite the expression and, and also do an, a substitution example as well for this one. So I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this question.
Okay, so let's see how you did with that example. So first, the first few questions are nice and quick. We just need to write down numbers for each of these. So the first one, we've got to write down the coefficient of x to the power of 4. So that is negative 6 over there. So I'm going to put here negative 6. Then I need to write down the degree of the fifth term. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is my fifth term over here. The degree is the same as the exponent of x, which is 3. Then I need to write down the constant term. So my constant term is this one over here. Now I don't need to write the plus. I only need to write the sign if there is if it's a minus. So I'm just going to write 2 for my constant term. Then we need to write down the coefficient of x. Now it's just x. It's not x squared or x cubed or anything. It's just x. So that's this one over here. The coefficient is negative 3. And then you need to write down the degree of the expression. Now again, all of these terms just have x in them. They don't have multiple variables. So I don't need to worry about adding any exponents. I'm just looking for the highest exponent out of all the terms in this expression. So that's going to be 4. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to rewrite the expression in standard form, which means in descending powers of x. Okay, so I'm starting off with this expression over here, negative 3x plus x squared minus 6x to the power of 4 plus 2 minus 7x cubed. So to write it in descending powers of x, I'm going to, for question f, I'm going to write first my negative 6x to the power of 4. Then I have minus 7x cubed. Then I have plus, six, uh, plus x squared, minus 3x, and plus 2. You need to be careful and make sure that you always move the sign with its term. So the 7x cubed, you have to have the, the minus with it. The 2 is positive, it must stay positive. The x to the power of 4 is negative, it needs to stay negative. The x squared is positive, it needs to stay positive, and the 3x is negative, it needs to stay negative. So no matter how you rearrange it, you have to keep the signs with their terms. So when we're putting it in descending powers of x, we have to be careful about that. And then g, we have to determine the value of this expression if x is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to start off by taking my expression. As I said, always work from the version that they gave you rather than the version you got when you rearranged it if you were asked to do that because otherwise you could end up with problems coming through from what you did over there if you made a mistake there okay now i'm going to substitute in the negative one so i've got negative three times negative one plus negative one squared minus six times negative one to the power of four plus two minus 7 times negative 1 cubed. And remember, whenever you're doing substitution, you put it in brackets. Okay, so first I'm going to sort out all of my exponents, and then I'll come back to the multiplication. So I have negative 3 times negative 1, plus then negative 1 squared. This is an even exponent, so that's going to be positive. And 1 squared just stays 1. Minus 6, and then negative 1 to the power of 4. Again, it's an even exponent, so that's going to be positive. So it's just 1, because 1 to the power of 4 is 1. Plus 2, minus 7. Then here I've got negative 1 cubed. This is an odd exponent. That means that that's going to stay negative, and 1 cubed is still 1. Okay, so now I can go and do all my multiplication. So I have negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3, plus 1. Minus 6 times 1 is just minus 6, plus 2. And minus 7 times negative 1 is plus 7. And when you work all of that out, you should have ended up with an answer of 7. And that is how we work with polynomials. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.